Hello and welcome. Um, I'm back with another album review, ominous of course. Uh, today we have the fourth studio album by the thrash metal legends Metallica. Yeah, this is requested by Zach Sharman, who was very surprised, and me too actually, that I didn't review Metallica's first and fourth album yet. If you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I didn't do that yet. You know, I only reviewed their classic albums in between because it was requested by Stephen Young early on and by Rock Do because. Just because. I believe uh, Steven requested a later album by Metallica, Say Danger, of course, to piss me off because it's fucking Steven, I mean, come on um, Yeah, so um, the fourth album, this was always a very overlooked album in their discography because the first three albums, of course, feature Cliff Burton, which are critically acclaimed. Great albums, of course, so you know, cannot really go wrong with that. Um, but the fourth one, people seem conflicted between about this. You really, you either really love this album or you loathe it because the production, you know, the bass isn't audible. That's the most obvious thing you can say about this album. Uh, Cliff dies, so Cliff isn't playing. J uh, Jason Hatfield debuts on this album, but I would say he debuts on the Black album because, like Lars or Hatfield or James, I believe it was Lars. Yeah, James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich produces together with Fleming Rasmussen, who produced all the classic, you know, the, I believe, Rise, Master of Puppets, and this one, I believe. I, I believe he, uh, he produced the debut, so I don't know exactly, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, they, I think they on purpose, uh, you know, just edited the bass out, just, you know, made the bass inaudible. Probably Fleming, you know, it was very obvious for Fleming, but he was like, yeah, I mean, these are the demands of the band, so we just go, we just go with that, I guess. Uh, so, so that's a fair game. That's a fair game, you know. It's you know, at the end of the day, it is James and Lars's bands and Kirk, I guess. Oh, uh, Robert Band too. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, there's one retard in the in the corner eating glue, saying, "Oh, Robert is part of the band too." I suppose he, you know. What the fuck is even? What the fuck is he, is Robert even doing in that band? Like me? Yeah, yeah, me talking is just a fucking atrocity. Like yeah, you know he's just earning his paycheck, I suppose. He's not. He's doing jack shit. I mean, come on, man. Uh, I just don't really care for later Metallica, but uh, back in the day, you know, around this time, this is definitely an exceptional album. Um, it was for a while my personal favorite Metallica album, but. Yeah, I mean, we can all agree that there are objectively better albums by Metallica, but that's not to say that this is a bad album, because I still love the album, spoiler alert. I mean, you cannot go wrong with M uh, 80s Metallica, and if you know my previous ratings for the other, you know, the first three with Cliff Burton, if you know my ratings for that one, then this one should be pretty obvious, 80s Metallica, I'm, I mean, let's just go into the track listing. Uh, we have Blacken, which was always kind of like my personal favorite of the record, or just my ob objectively favorite, I suppose. Uh, you know, how, how does it start off? It starts off with a kind of screechy, ominous kind of tone, you know. It starts off with a kind of noise in the back, I suppose. And of course, that drum fill, the drum intro from Lars. You know, when he could actually drum. <laughs> no offense, Lars, love ya, but uh, your drumming is kind of off right now, nowadays. Yeah, you have to agree there. Um, well, no songs were still written by Mustaine, I think. No, they're not, no. Uh, I believe on the first two, yeah. On the first two, there were some Mustaine songs written. Um, yeah, so Blackened, great opening track. Keeps the ball rolling perfectly. I love the song. Uh, great solos, perfect intro, like I said. The, the riffs are intelligent, yet very, you know, repetitive in the best way possible. What I mean with that is that it goes in that, into that repetitive trash kind of, you know, that signature trash sound, but it's still progressive enough because this album is actually titled uh, Trash Metal and Progressive Metal, I believe. And it's the only metallic album that has been labeled as progressive metal, so that's actually really interesting. Yeah, trash metal and progressive metal. So that's that's really interesting. But it's on Wikipedia, so it might, you know, it's not, you know, the most honest thing or the most objective thing ever because it still is uh, Wikipedia at the end of the day. At the end of the day, if I can fucking speak. 
Um, yeah, so great opening track, don't really have a flaw with this one, uh, love it, and yeah, it's just perfect, I think. Now, we, you know, speaking of perfect tracks, we have Injustice for All, I mean, this, well, it's almost the longest track though, but two seconds, it's the second longest song on the record, it's 9 minutes and 47 seconds, and when you have an epic like that, and it's, it's not even your longest song, it's not even your final form, that must say how incredible this song is. And I know that, you know, uh, me being a, like my biggest influence ever. He's a good guy though, but probably not my biggest. You know my biggest influence though, if you, if you know me. Um, but of course the melon says that some of these songs sound too long and that they're more, of a, they're more of a chore rather than, you know, actual enjoyable songs. I can see that, but I love the length, you know. It's, it's kind of has that mentality. Yeah, you know, that I use with Oasis Beer now, you know, it has that kind of mentality that, you know, the song just goes on forever and ever and ever. And um, I just love that because you can just listen to the song instead of playing the replay button. That's probably why I love these long ass songs so much because you just listen to the songs, you just listen a shitload to it and then you listen to it again because it's such a long ass track and you, you have to press the replay button less because they're so long. So, so I think that's only like, you know, a, a, a good thing. I, I think it's a good thing in my book, but I can see people not liking that. But, you know, if you know me, I love a long song. I love an epic, so there we go. And arguably this whole album is an epic. I mean, come on now. Uh, then we have Eye of the Beholder, which is a very uh, interesting song. No, it's, it's not the one with the... Oh, we... That's uh, later on, I believe. But... Um, uh, this is definitely a great track, I think. It's written by the the original True Piece, Hatfield Hammett. Ulrich, although Hammett isn't an original member, but you know, he was there from, from the Kill Em All day, so I guess he is original. He wasn't in the first Inception, but you get me. He was on the debut. He, ha he has been on every Metallica album, that's what I mean. So he's an original member, in my opinion. Um, I saw the original members play on there, except for all, all the original members con contributed to this record. I believe there's no new stats feature on there. No, he didn't write anything because it was pretty late, I believe. They already wrote the record and then had uh, new stats to fill it in to waste an hour of his time. Probably even longer because he's, he isn't even edible. Edible, he's, he isn't even audible, I suppose, audible. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, some neighbors. Um, yeah, good track. I The only flaw I have with it is that it was not really a bad song. It's a great song in my opinion, but... I do still listen to it more, but the lyrics are really intelligent, the song was really nice to listen to, very nicely structured. And it's arguably the most progressive song that Metallica ever did. Although I do need to re-listen to it more to really uh, stamp my, you know, my insurement on that track. My, my agreement, my uh, stamp of approval, so to speak. Then we have of course the obvious one. Uh, written by Ulrich and Hatfield. Uh, <laughs> songs are written by Hatfield, Ulrich, Ulrich, Hatfield. Like, yeah, I, I guess one one of the two co contributed more because it goes like Ulrich, Hatfield, Hatfield, Ulrich. You know, with every track, and I'm like, why have that? What? I'm so confused. But apparently, one wrote it more than the other. I don't know. It maybe starts off with a drum beat, or maybe starts off with a guitar. I don't fucking know. Like you care. I mean, this is pretty obvious. Uh, sort of with the with the machine gun, like the uh, go 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 go. You know that's intro. Then the riff, of course, by uh, uh, you know I believe it's James Hetfield. James Hetfield has more of the mature kind of low tuned guitar, whereas Kirk Hammett is like wah and really high. So you know he comes in with the solo, I suppose. So it's a really nice opening from James Hetfield, and I love that. James Hetfield and uh, Kirk are kind of distinct. Yeah, they are distinct because James is kind of lower tuned and Kirk is kind of higher tuned, which, you know, is very recognizable. Some guitars almost sound the same, which is very difficult to separate them from each other. I can't really name a band, but you get the point. Um, yeah, so, you know, I can explain this song, but you've probably heard it. I mean, I sometimes even forget that this song is on the album because it's such a classic. It's one of my autumn favorites though, don't get me wrong. It's one of my autumn favorite Metallica songs, but uh, you know, what's the thing? It kind of speaks for itself, honestly. It's the, the lyrics are kind of mental, you know, talking about this one person, this one 
you know, that becomes one, he loses all his limbs, all his arms, all his legs, all the, you know, his ears, his nose, his senses, I believe. You know, he, he loses everything, except for like his, his how do you say that, his, his arsenal, his rump, I don't know how you say that, like your, your body, he only keeps his body and his head, that's the only thing, you know, his uh, vital organs, he only keeps those things to keep him alive, to keep him suffering, and he just says, oh, uh, you know, uh, um, get me out of my misery, you know, he just, uh, just shoot me in the head, just pull the plug. It's just such a heavy song, you know, it's 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 not one of those cheery songs that um, sounds happy but she's actually depressed because this song is heavy as fuck. You know, it's a Metallica song, so... Uh, it's just a great song, I think, you know, it's great, it's uh, classic, it's just one, I mean, it's fucking one, just listen to it, man, you know it. It's a, it's an obvious classic, I mean, come on, man. It's one of the best Metallica songs. Uh, then we have the shortest trial, which is very kind of reminds me of the Kill 'Em All Day shortest trial, you know, very shamey drum beat, which I love, you know, because you gotta have some rock and roll tune in there, and the shortest trial is probably that. They're saying, you know, the shortest trial as pulled by you, uh, you're fucked, you know, that's uh, pretty funny lyrical content. So I do really like this song, you know, it goes back to the more rock and roll roots. And you guys probably think that I hate, you know, basic as fuck rock and roll, but I actually really love it, you know, I love a band like ACDC, they just, you know, balls to the wall, just, just to the floor, you know, rock and roll music, you know, gets to the point, just rocks out, you know, I love music like that, and, you know, ACDC is perfectly like that, so, you know, perfect band, I think. Um, so, you know, Metallica, they have some rock and roll tunes right there, but I do think they're the ultimate better band because uh, their highs are better and, you know, what's the thing? They are more diverse, although, you know, I love ACDC, but there we go. Which is probably really, like, uh, surprising for most people because most people probably think I hate that band because they're so repetitive, but they're a great rock and roll band. Uh, then we have Harvester of Sorrow, which kind of sounds the same like the shortest straw, but if eventually it gets more diverse. Ulrich Hatfield, Hatfield Ulrich, I don't understand why it's labeled as that. Like, why not have Hatfield always first or Ulrich first? Ulrich first, I cannot fucking speak. But uh, there we go. Um, yeah, so classic track. Uh, I love the, the chorus Harvester of Sorrow. Damn, damn after me. You know, just classic I think, just uh, very catchy to listen to. It's kind of similar to the short straw, but that doesn't really bother me. I just love the song. Um, yeah, and I think it's just an overall classic and definitely an essential in your Metallica playlist or the song in general. Just get it, you know, it's a classic. But we will continue. Uh, now we have the Freight Angels. The freight ends of sanity. I cannot speak anymore, you know, late in the day, so there we go. Or just in general. Uh, yeah, this is the song that, uh, you know, has the um, has the hey hoes on it, you know, the ooh wee, or the ooh. Um, I love the riffs on this one. It sounds really cringy, it sounds really nicely produced. Uh, I do think that Metallica sacrifices the bass for a more metallic crunch a more metallic bite in their in their sound which i love i love that crunch side that's crunch that's crunch sound in their music it sounds really good it sounds really finely produced um yeah i just love the sound <coughs> i just love the sound and i think it's just an overall joy fest to be at and <laughs> you gotta love those AOs. i mean it's kind of a guilty pleasure thing for me because most people probably hate that but i, but I love that I, I think it's funny as fuck you know, you gotta have a funny track in there. Metallica also has that because they are fucking Metallica. I mean, come on now. And then we have To Live To Die and, you know, I said on, I believe, The Kill Em All and I, I might have said it on, on those other two albums, you know, Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning. Um, I've said, <coughs> said that those instrumentals on the first four are just absolutely classic, so... This one just kind of speaks for itself. Um, There's a tribute to Cliff Bird and he actually co-wrote the song together with Hatfield Ulrich and he's the third uh, one that is credited for the song, you know, he co-wrote it because it's another kind of bass solo, there's a bass solo in there, so there we go. Great song, it's, uh, it's the longest track of the album, 9 minutes and 49 seconds, so it's 2 seconds longer than uh, Injustice for All. 
uh, yeah, just an overall incredible instrumental. Um, of the four instrumentals, well, I'm not gonna pick a favorite. You know, that's like choosing your favorite kid. I'm not gonna do that. But um, yeah, they're all incredible instrumentals. This one is classic too. Um, it's kind of that one mentality. You kind of have to listen to it for yourself. It's such an incredible tune. I love the spoken word too. All lyrics were written by James Hetfield, except for the spoken word section of The Live to Die. Posthumously attributed to Cliff Burton, my screen face to black. The bonus tracks on the digital re release were recorded live at the Seattle Coliseum, Seattle, Washington on August 29 and 30, 1989, and later appeared on the live album Live Shit, Binge, and Purge. 1993. Um, yeah, so the spoken word was maybe by Cliff Burton, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe someone can let me know that, but otherwise, you know, uh, doesn't matter because I still have the music, so there we go. The music is the important part. You know, I don't really care for spoken word, but it sounded very important. You know, it sounded like um, I, ne I never thought about it like this, but it sounds like a kind of you know, like a funeral kind of speech that you use, you know, the fallen and stuff like that. And uh, I, don't, I don't know what the spoken word said again, but I, I believe it was very honorable and very uh, respectful and very like noble. So it's a very high class instrumental, almost 10 minutes long. So an instrumental that is intelligent, long as fuck, it's an epic, you know, epic, long, same thing. But uh it's you know a tribute to arguably the best bases ever i mean come on now. it's fucking metallica so it's just a perfect instrument i mean come on now. and then we have dyer's eve and this is um you know one of those instrument or instrument is one of those fast balls to the wall just ballsy trash metal tracks you know they pretty much drop the progressive metal style and they go back to that kill them all ride the lightning kind of mentality where you know they are very very precise very pristine um yeah i just love this man i just love the um the trash style you know it's damage ink it's uh it's another metal militia it's not a creeping death i suppose or the god of cthulhu well, not really, but this is one of those, you know, uh, fast driving, you know, final close. F fire, fire with fire, I suppose, kind of like a classic trash track. But every Metallica track is a classic trash track. <laughs> I tried to say that 10 times, Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm kind of surprised I didn't push it up, really. Uh, I'm not going to try to repeat it again, so there we go. It's perfect. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those classic trash tracks, you know, uh, although, you know, Metallica isn't really classic trash anymore, you know, their later stuff is, isn't really that good. But this was really their last front-to-back amazing album, I think, although the Black album is consistent too. It's not amazing, I think. It, I, I just think it's good. It's really good, but it's not amazing like their, you know, or the, the terms are not Gene Simmons, fuck sake. It's not like their age work. I mean, come on, age of Metallica is just fantastic. So you know my rating for this record. It's a 10 out of 10. I mean, come on. I mean, age of Metallica is just flawless. I gave every record I believe for Metallica in the 80s is 10, so there we go. If only they could keep it up. But I mean, four flawless records back to back, fantastic. I mean, give me more, but four classics back to back, that's very difficult for any band to do. You know, especially for a metal band. You know, yeah, so there we go. Uh, you know, Black Sabbath or something, but... Uh, well, arguably did it even better, but that's of course debatable. Uh, yeah, I think that it's slightly better, but that's a debate for another day. And the Black Album, I suppose, but... It's a bit too overplayed for me, but... You know, I still love, I still love the Black Album, but it's a bit too overplayed for me. But um, that's... And just for all by Metallica, let me know what you think about this record in the comments down below. Ah, but uh, let me know what is your favorite Metallica album. This is probably my personal favorite Metallica album, but it will not appear on, you know, if I will ever release that list, you know, the, um, what, what's it, what's the thing? Um, fuck no, what's the thing? My favorite albums ever. It will probably not be on there because, you know, Metallica has two objectively better albums, although I do think that this record is highly up there as one of their best. It's, it's 80s Metallica, so it's, it's up there, for sure. Um, and I mean, besides the 80s, they've, they've released a lot of records since, since the Black Album, so there we go, just, you know, like four, I believe. 
if you count load or reload, there's two albums, then four, I think. Lulu, five, if you want to throw that in there, sure. Yeah, so there we go. Um, yeah, that was Metallica. I talked about it 20 minutes because it's fucking Metallica. I mean, come on. Lost the band. Well, you know, I still love them, but I love them because of their early stuff. So there we go. Uh, but that's pretty much every Metallica fan ever. Uh, let, me, let, me know, let me know what is your favorite Metallica song. What is your favorite Metallica album? Let me know in the comments down below. Your favorite Metallica member. Fuck it, let's throw it in there. Yeah, let me know everything in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Ripcliff, legend, will always stay in our hearts. That was cheesy as fuck, but it's true. It's the truth. Rest in peace, legend.